Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpabana chapam Animadi biravritam mayukhai Raham mityeva vibhavaye bhavani Kulangana kulantastha kaolini kula yogini Namaste. So now we want to continue with our Lalita Sahasranam. 92. Kulangana. She hails from the family of chaste women. Chaste means that she has no interest besides her husband, Shiva. I mean, if you have a husband like Shiva, why would you look outside for anything? You know, one of the chief uh, ills of the Kali Yuga is that no one is committed in relationships. As soon as some little difficulty comes up, then they, they leave. They break their vows. They go off with somebody else. And this has been my experience and the experience of many, many others. So this is the problem in Kali Yuga. People have no integrity. They don't follow their word. If they give their word, it's just a show. And as soon as there's any problem, they're out of here. So, in this Kali Yuga, how can anyone be happy? It's not possible. Oh, the birds are happy because I fed them. <laughs> They're simple. But human beings are very complicated. And so, even though they make a promise, even though they enter into a so-called permanent relationship or committed relationship, they don't follow through. They don't do what needs to be done to keep up the relationship. So one of the things about this, the commentary says, is that these women protect the honor of the lineage that they hail from, and they also protect the lineage of their husband. This is a chaste woman. In fact, in the old days, if the husband died before the wife, which is a pretty common occurrence, she would enter the funeral pyre rather than live as a widow. This is called sati. And the name sati comes from ma, comes from Lalita, that one of her family names is sati. And when she went to the sacrifice of Daksha, her father, and Daksha vilified Lord Shiva, insulted him in front of the whole assembly, including even Brahma and Indra, then she couldn't stand it. She couldn't tolerate it. So rather than bring dishonor to her lineage, either her husband or her father, she committed self-immolation. She spontaneously generated fire and burned her body to ashes. So this is the level of commitment. This is the level of honor and integrity that really is the standard of a chaste woman. And so that's why this funeral rite is called sati. Now, since the British occupation, it has been outlawed because many women were made to commit sati against their will. But what can you say? Kali Yuga is just full of so much nonsense. If it's done against their will, then what's the meaning of it? You see, people don't think things through, or rather, they don't have the integrity to actually follow the scriptural injunctions. So, another interpretation is that a chaste woman should not be seen much in public, only maybe at family 
religious functions like that. And most of the time, she would spend her time serving Shiva in the forest while he's in deep meditation. See, the wife of a sage is supposed to serve the sage because as his wife, any spiritual advancement that he earns also applies to her. And there are many great couples, for example, Vasishta, Vasishta Muni is married to a star, literally a star. This star is a wonderful star. It's known as Regulus in Western uh, terminology. And in the Veda is known as Arundhati. Arundhati means red, Arun means red. And Regulus is a red colored star. So she's very famous. And she is the wife of this great yogi who is immortal. Well, not exactly completely immortal, but he lives, his lifetime is the age of the universe. And his job, he goes from planet to planet in different times and places to distribute transcendental knowledge, knowledge of yoga. So the famous scripture, Yoga Vashishta, uh, means the yoga of Vasishta. In Sanskrit, one form of, take, of the possessive case is lengthening the first syllable. So the yoga of Vasishta is called yoga Vashishta. So anyway, Arundhati is his wife and she remains in her place in the heavens while he visits different planets. And in between, when his missions are completed, he goes back and spends time with her. Meanwhile, she doesn't come out of her place in the heavens. She doesn't appear in public, especially in Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is so nasty. Then Lalitambika, because she is not only a woman, not only the wife of Shiva, but also the Supreme, the Saguna Brahma, she protects herself with the veil of Maya, of ignorance, avidya. Uh, avidya means not knowing the Vedic truths. Aham Brahmasmi, Tattvamasi, Sarvakalvidang Brahma. See? Because people don't know these truths, these Mahavakyas, the great sayings of the four Vedas, really the themes or topics of the entire Vedas, Upanishads, Vedanta, and other scriptures. Because they don't know these things, they don't understand the, the real meaning of life or the scriptures or anything. So because of this avidya, she is hidden. People don't know her. And those who do are very fortunate. It means they're blessed. So we should try to attain her blessings because this is the secret of life. So in Saundarya Lahari, verse 9, it says, You can join with your consort Shiva in secret in the Sahasrara. Now the Sahasrara is explained by breaking through the six psychic planes. That means the six chakras. Conquering the 25 tattvas which are, we explained in our series on the mysteries of Matrika. Then one can reside in Sahasrara. So she penetrates all these planes, huh? even though she is the Maya, she is the material creation. She breaks through all the planes of illusion and avidya, and she meets pure awareness, Shiva, in the Sahasrara the thousand-petaled lotus, but this is in secret. So the Sada Shiva Tattva is very secret because he is undifferentiated Brahman, unconditioned, pure awareness. So this is a separate tattva, a para tattva, known as Sadakya Tattva, very secret, not well known even in the scriptures, and also known as Parabrahma. Oh, there's so much here. <laughs> the Sri Vidya, 
the form of worship which is given in the commentary on Saundarya Lahari, please see our series on this, is the most confidential. Why? Because it bestows all wishes, all desires. So if an unscrupulous person becomes initiated and masters this, then they can create great chaos and havoc in the world. So it's kept as a deep secret only for the qualified disciples. The second problem in Kali Yuga is that people deviate from the actual prescribed rituals. So the rituals have no potency. It's better to, do, to develop individual bhakti towards the Divine Mother. And this way, there's no possibility of mistake because she guides us in every step. So next, Kulantastha. Kula can also mean scriptures. We talked about the Kula as being the path between the uh, Muladhara chakra at the base and the Sahasrara at the top. But Kula can also mean the scriptures. So she resides in these scriptures. Over the last two and a half years, we edited the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. And this gives all the secrets. Uh, this tells everything, all the background, everything you need to know about the Divine Mother. So she resides in these scriptures and also in scriptures like this Lalita Sahasranam. Very esoteric, very powerful. So in this triad that we saw earlier, uh, Nama 90, 90 is Kulamritaika Rasika, uh, that she is the triad. She is the, the triple, the ontological triple that gives a real meaning to existence. So in this triad, the form of the known or that which is worthy of knowing is called the knowledge of Kula. The Kula path, this gives rise to the name Kaulas. Uh, again, the possessive form is, is uh, created by lengthening the first vowel. So those who are of the Kula path, who are the yogis performing the Kaula yoga or Kundalini yoga, they're known as Kaulas. So then she is the knowledge or the object of knowledge of Kaula. Kula also means Shakti. Shakti is everywhere. She's omnipresent. She's in everything because she is the substance of the universe, which is consciousness. So this situation is well described in the Kena Upanishad as Pratibodha Viditam. She is the known at all levels of consciousness. Now, Kaolini, she is the core of the Kaula worship. The Kaula ka uh, worship is a tantric worship according to the Kaula method. Okay, and that's what we're talking about. This is the theme of this whole section of Lalita Sahasranama. So we have talked about this, I mean, for the years, <laughs> talking about the chakras, talking about the yogas connected with each chakra, talking about the, the different states of consciousness and how one evolves from one state to another through the practice of these yogas, that the yogas have to be practiced simultaneously and how a particular session of tantric yoga has to address her presence in all the chakras. Uh, and by this, she gradually rises by her grace, not by force, but because she wants to, and then reaches Shiva and the Sahasrara. And this is the highest bliss. I mean, once you experience this uh, fulfillment of Tantra yoga, Kundalini yoga, and you don't want to do anything else, you know. It's so satisfying that really everything else becomes pale and dry and unsatisfying in comparison. So this is why we're giving these uh, videos 
to interest you and hopefully motivate you to actually do this path. So Kaula also means the union of Shiva and Shakti because this is the ultimate aim of the Kula, the Kula path, uh, to raise her presence, raise her energy up until she connects with Shiva. She wants to connect with Shiva and it's only the fact that we are attached to our various upadis and blocks, uh, the grantis, that keeps her from rising. Once we get out of the way and withdraw into Brahman, then she happily uh, connects with Shiva, and this makes us very happy too. Kula Yogini means the mental worship of the Kaula path. She is the mistress, she is the yogini uh, of this uh, Kaula path, which is exceedingly subtle. Kundalini is her most subtle form because it's directly life energy. It's the only energy that can create life. That's why in the sexual orgasm, one experiences the Kundalini rising, but only for a few seconds. This is why people are so attached to sex. They, they get to experience the perfection of meditation, but then it's withdrawn. However, by practicing Kundalini yoga properly, one can experience this as much as one likes. And this is really the perfection of yoga. So she is called Kula and sometimes she's called Akula. Kula means the Muladhara chakra and Akula means the Sahasrara. Sahasrara is not actually a chakra. It's actually above the chakras. And we'll get to a further discussion of that in the next video in this series. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.